So we're here in the Eastern Cape, messing around with some uh, heavy artillery. And you guys have been watching Charles in a few episodes and he's been working hard and just as a friend I just wanted to reward him with something before we get started in this new season of hunting. Um, as you know the channel is called African Born Adventures. So you need something proper to <laughs> hang your knife on. I thought maybe my pants were and, falling down. Um, you know, working hard, losing a lot of weight, so we needed a slightly narrower belt. <laughs> and so that's something to kick off the hunting ah, season properly. That's awesome, thanks. Really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Ryan's gotten into some leather work lately. So this was made by him by hand, so that's quite special. Thank you, I appreciate it. So Ryan and I haven't seen each other for a while. Um, so today is the first day of this year's hunting season that we're hunting together. Hopefully you see some animals. Yeah. There's lots great. of lots of pigs around, maybe some feathered deer, and who knows what else we might find. Just need to cut our teeth on something. We, today we're hunting with YouTube's most popular rifle, the 270 Seiko Winchester Short Mag. Um, it weighs a ton. This is Charles' baby. Is this a new suppressor from last year? Yeah, so it's the same suppressor. We've added a barrel tuner and a muzzle brake made by Warrior. And uh, that's grouping fantastically shooting lights out. Let's see how it performs today. Well, let's, if you do your part, the rifle will do the rest. <laughs> so after all the handshakes and jokes, we analyzed the wind direction and made a plan to walk up a ravine bed where we bumped into a lucky lechwe who wasn't quite ready for the meat hook just yet. However, a few hundred meters later, we found a warthog that was. Putting in a nice quartering away shot, we found my pig 80 meters away. We decided to continue further into the warthog pantry in search of one for Sam. And we didn't have to wait too long before this boar showed up for his lunchtime drink. Cut it there, just past there. After gutting Sam's pig, we decided to head back to camp and clean the warthogs out properly in preparation for the cold room. protocol is to get the animals gutted and the cavity washed out. Wetting the carcass also helps get it ice cold in the crisp mountain wind. Sam's pro tip is to give the cavity a little taste test before hanging it in the cold room. Wash it out of the hand, give it a little stomach out, courtesy of Uncle Ryan. 
Oh mein Gott, der ist ja auch nicht gut. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In preparation for the next day, we sharpened our knives, got the fire started, and our bellies filled. We got up early the next morning for a cup of coffee, grabbed a rusk, and headed straight to the mountain. After a bit of glassing, we didn't come up with much. Looking for some kudu this morning. So in particular, there's a very big bull in this area that we're looking for. That Charles kindly said I could shoot. <laughs> um, we couldn't find him. We didn't turn much up. It's very windy today. Didn't see the mountain reed buck. And we managed to come right on our way back to the vehicle. We walked into this nice sow. Very windy, but we we're close enough to take a nice little headshot. Um, so the meat's going to be great. Uh, there won't be any damaged. When you can take a headshot, I think it's good. it's good, especially with a rifle like this setup. It's so accurate, and the confidence factor is, you know, I, I can't speak more to that. You know, I'm very confident with this rifle. It's it's Charles' rifle, but you know, you always see me shooting with it. I think I've shot more animals with it than Charles. Now. I keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you go back in previous episodes, you'll see this rifle on full display. Yeah, so thank you. No, it's a pleasure. Um, Glad you shot straight. Well, that's, that's never the problem, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Always fun and games. And uh, warthog make such fun hunting. Yeah. And there's so many of them. So the cattle farm is obviously not super keen on having too many of them around. Yeah. So, and we're only too happy to call them for them and hunt them. It's a lot of fun. When you walk behind Charlie, the holes are really too big for your, your weight. That's not very nice. <sighs> Some people say that. After a quiet afternoon that didn't turn up much else, we cleaned the pig, lit the fire, and shared the day's stories with Calvin and the boys around the braai. Just have to make sure the fire is big. It's the point. That feels not cold. Short. Is that energy you're drinking there, Sean? Not after a successful hunt, no. Teenagers on their phones. They're running each other. Hey? Are you guys WhatsApping each other? No. no, no, no. Whether they put the, the Nazis in there the, for the baboon, like a trap? He puts his hand, he grabs a notch and he can't let go. Grab, grab. 
Yeah. It's like a teenager and a cell phone. You know, he's just can't let go. <laughs> if you set a trap, if you set a trap inside there with a cell phone and a teenager, you catch him every time. <laughs> Oh, you got ribs there? Uh, the oh, no, okay. uh, four crashes. What have we got tonight, Chef Shaul? We've got some sausages. We've got some pork crashes. We've got some steak. We've got some garlic bread. And some burro wash rolls. Or burri. So you got something of everything, so I don't want to hear any complaints. <laughs> if you can't find something to enjoy here, then there's something wrong with it. No vegetables. The next morning we had our usual coffee and rusks and headed straight to a new piece of land in order to hunt mountain reedbuck and impala. What a beautiful morning here, not a breath of wind and things kicked off quite quickly. We climbed a little ridge in order to try and spot some impala. Got fortunate to, to see some mountain reed bike coming our way and the ram came out last but unfortunately couldn't get the camera and the, and the rifle on them at the same time and so they spooked so we just followed them a little bit longer and came across the herd of impala that we originally were after made a nice little clean headshot, very close shot. So animal standing still, I think it is quite an easy shot to try and save some meat. And after the shot, a whole bunch of other impala jumped out. And so Sam said, Uncle Ryan, Uncle Ryan, there's another impala. But I don't feel like being a greedy boy and shooting having the all biggest the, impala and the biggest boy. having all the fun to myself. So I said, no, Sam, come, it's your turn. And Sam uh, made a terrific shot very far. 
about 300 meters. Um, nice perch here, like a sniper's position. And mm. um, unfortunately it got up, but Sam put another shot in and finished the job off. Well done, boy. Thank you. Nice shooting. Your eye, this thing's old. Always blow my mind how beautiful an Impala is. Is this thing old or it is pretty old, eh? Listen. This bug's oh. very active here. He's chipped off here. Um, chipped off area, both horns. Some people get offended with headshots, and I don't understand. In like a controlled situation like that. Do people really get offended like that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Look how sick the bases are. Yeah, it's beautiful, eh? That is a proper old ram. He does his, his, I mean, he's short. It always looks like a puku. Yeah, <laughs> a puku. Nice hooks. I mean, Big hands. That is a proper ram. Beauty. Fully mature. Never gonna get much bigger than this. Mm -mm. I think he's in his prime. The way his body looks, his condition is great. Uh, his neck, everything looks good. Mm. Well done, Sam. Thank you. Good shooting, boy. Well, well done. done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. Well, they're training, not paying off. No, I got a. It's a nice lunch. I got second. Well, we've been fortunate enough today to hunt a new property. And uh, we weren't quite sure the lay of the property and where to look and where the animals would be found. We chose to take the higher ground, uh, walked up on the ridge and uh, glassed from the top. And it's so nice to have the rifle set up that we've got so we can literally set up at the top there and shoot down. So we spotted a, a group of Impala and uh, we picked out a nice ram. And uh, Ryan was up first with a nice headshot. Um, it was about, how far did we say? Uh, not more than 150. Yeah, less than 150 yeah. meters. Perfect dead rest off the bar pods. Uh, and put the Impala ram down on the spot. And then this ram ran out. Uh, we hadn't seen him, he was obviously a little bit obscured by the vegetation. And he ran out and he went and stood at a bit of a distance. It was about 320 meters. And we quickly dialed in with the, with the rifle scope. And Sam made an excellent shot on this ram. He dropped him on the spot. Um, the shot went a little bit high, so we just put in an insurance shot, and um, that was uh, the end of this ram. Quite interesting about these two Impala rams. Um, they were very, very thick bases, but short horns. Mm -hmm. um, so they obviously from the same gene pool. You can see they're really not very long, but they're very, very thick. Two solid rams. Yeah, interesting, the black colouring on the ears. Mm. Often spot them, you know, with little socks and the black pads on the back of their legs. Very distinctive of the impala. Just a beautiful, beautiful animal. They got some of the most groomed coats of yeah. all the antelope. It actually shines in the sun. To their detriment. Yeah, to their detriment. <laughs> I always say. If an impala was a rare antelope, it would be highly sought after. Yeah. With its natural beauty. Yeah, they are. Um, stunning, stunning animals. And they taste good too. It's one of my favorite eating meats. Hope you enjoyed this adventure. You know what to do. There's a lot of freeloaders watching who I don't subscribe. Charles getting <laughs> angry. He's taking your address. <laughs> Please subscribe, <laughs> like our videos, and feel free to leave comments. Cheers. Till next time. So we've been glassing out the whole morning and uh, is this loud enough for you, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you, you really have to speak up with this wind. Yeah. Otherwise I get murdered by the editor. Yeah, the editor. Any shout out for Olivia Dunn? <laughs> Sam's uh, latest girlfriend. There he is there! <laughs> Alright, let's get it together, right? I don't do speaking. You don't do speaking? What are you doing right now? Back to the, to the camera. Yeah, but you're speaking to a camera right now. Oh. Makes
makes sense, boy. Come on. Yeah, you pep now. Huh? What do you think of all this meat, Joe? Yeah. What do you I think? Best the meat is the very, very best meat. The best? The best one. The sure. best one. You happy because you pack now? You happy? Yeah, we're gonna get meat every day. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna get meat every day. In okay. Chinese, you like it? Yeah, in Chinese, it's always number one. Number one, in Chinese. Yeah, we're gonna get it. And in Pala, there? Yeah, in Pala, number one. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys cleaned up all your meat. Joe, you know that there's some people that don't eat meat? Why? Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no, maybe my Rasta, Rastas. Like Rastas. Rasta uh, don't eat yeah, meat. Yeah. yeah. But you know that there's people that choose, they'd rather eat vegetables than you. <laughs> meat. You. Uh, uh, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? Yeah. Where? Everywhere in the world. People, it's, people think it's wrong to eat meat. Yo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I promise you, they think it's wrong. Why? They say it's cruelty. <laughs> huh? And you believe it? No, I don't believe it. I'm just telling you. I may have not believe it too. Of course, I don't believe it, right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm eating meat. <laughs>